All right, so I figured I'd uh, make this video very quickly to show you how a uh, differential works. I apologize about the bad lighting. One of the lights in the shop's kind of out. Um, first off, before you work with any sort of gears or bearings and such, uh, grab yourself a brush or something and just make sure that your work area is free of debris and dust and stuff because if you start working with bearings and gears and you get a bunch of crap on it, like any dust or particles or whatever, it's going to ruin your bearings really quick. So if you can keep it clean, excellent. But if you can't, well, at least make sure you clean them before you put them back. All right, a differential. And yes, second note, I am wearing gloves. Not because I'm worried about getting my hands dirty or anything. It's because I want to keep this camera clean. It's not mine. All right, so differential works on a very basic kind of principle. The principle itself is all it's really doing is it's changing power for 90 degrees. So you have your input shaft that goes, comes like this, okay? And your input shaft will rotate in any sort of direction, so one direction or the other. And what it'll do is it'll translate this rotational motion to this rotational motion, okay? So it transfers power 90 degrees. And if you had a shaft going straight through, like if you had this going to a gear that was attached to a shaft, both wheels on your, uh, on your rear axle there would spin at the exact same rate. What a differential allows them to do is it spins at different rates. So what it is, is this ring gear is attached to this entire case, okay? And then this, these four gears here, two of them are kind of just idler gears. These two gears are free floating inside the case. So they're attached to a spline on a bearing there. And what that allows it to do is as it turns the whole case and if both wheels of traction have the, is spinning the exact same rate, the whole case will spin, these gears won't move. But let's say one starts slipping, it allows one gear to turn at a different rate than the other. So it allows this one to either move turn slower or faster to allow power to be transferred equally. As long as both wheels of traction and power will be transferred equally, but um, one wheel will spin faster than the other and that allows you to go around corners. So you have your input gear, which turns your ring gear or pinion gear, turns your ring gear. It'll turn your entire case. And then this gear set in here is, will just transfer power. Now you've got to make just one thing to remember if you're counting teeth on your differential, you want to change the ratio on the differential, these teeth in here make absolutely no difference because these two little gears, that those are idler gears, they're the exact same size and then these two bigger gears are the exact same size as well. The only thing that affects your ratio is your ring gear here and your input or pinion gear here. So. Um, let me give you a quick example of how if you want a lower ratio, if you want a lower ratio, you want either more teeth on the ring gear or less teeth on the pinion gear. And you can make a combination of both. So for example, let's make it easy. If you have 40 teeth on this ring gear and 10 teeth on your uh, pinion gear, it means you'll have a four to one reduction when you have output. But if you had um, 30 teeth here and 10 teeth here, you'd have a 3 to 1 reduction, so it's less of a reduction. So you have a higher ratio, which means the wheels will turn faster for the same rotation of this input shaft. So, I don't know, the best way to count a teeth while the differential's in is to just kind of turn the differential by hand and mark every single tooth, make sure you counted them. And same thing for the pinion gear. And then, yeah, that's pretty much how differential works. Nothing incredibly fancy, but it's Confusing unless you kind of see what's going on there and uh, Depending on the application depending on the size of it. You'll either have You'll have a different kind of bearing here Like if it's a vehicle application most times you'll have a tapered roller bearing which is what we have here So here's what a differential looks like inside the actual case itself. Sorry about the poor lighting here I'm just holding a torch and trying to uh, Get a good bit of lighting here, but uh, if you look way in the back there I don't know if you can, oh, you can't really see it. It's kind of in the bottom there. Uh, shoot, where's a good little face of light? Okay, if you look at the back there, that's your input or pinion gear, right in the very back there of the case. And of course this one with all the little marks on it, that's your ring gear. And your axle shafts will connect to your tires here, all right? So your axle shafts will actually go, sorry, between through the splines inside of the differential here. So this is attached splines here. It goes all the way through and connects another bearing over there. So there's a bearing on this end and a bearing on that end. And uh, same thing for the other side. So that'll uh, 
Jeez, I'm really bad with the torch here. I'm trying to do it, trying to do two things at once. Um, it allows you, of course, like I was saying earlier, one will spin freely of the other, and uh, realistically, the differential what looks like without a case. So let's go over here to this truck. Is, let's see if we can see better here. So you see there it is your input shaft. You see that kind of thing that's hanging loose there that I just kind of left it there for now. And then that's what the case looks like. So you guys see the case going through. That's the ring and pinion gear that I pulled out the entire differential I pulled out of this case. All right, so take care guys. If you've got any questions or if I missed anything, it's a little unclear, uh, just drop a comment or shoot me a message. All right, take care guys.